Hi everybody, we will be live and ready to go in just a moment. We'll wait until right about at 2 o'clock to go ahead and get started. Hi, Carly. <laughs> All right, friends, we'll give you another moment to pop in and get settled. While we're waiting to begin, if you want to post in the comments maybe where you're watching from and how old your kiddos are or how old you are, uh, we'd love to have that information. Helps us show uh, the people who fund us kind of what kind of cool things we've been doing during this quarantine season. So definitely leave us a little note in there and uh, let us know where you're watching from. All right, well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Rachel Easton. I am the education director for Harbor Wild Watch, and it is my job to keep bringing interesting and fun kind of environmentally based videos and uh, uh, live presentations to try to, you know, keep us all uh, entertained and, uh, and ed educated, I guess, during this time of quarantine. So thanks for tuning in to all of our, our live videos. If you uh, w wouldn't mind sharing, we love the exposure. Um, so it's super easy to just hit that share button. You can share it to your own page or if a group uh, you're a member of is uh, relevant to the discussion, we'd love to see that too. So, all right, we got some teachers tuning in. I see Jennifer Schumacher, she's a teacher, um, and Genevieve too. Hi, teachers. We really do appreciate all the work that you are putting in uh, for your students in this kind of very strange time that we're dealing with. So today's topic for our live video is going to be a, a wonder walk, which is um, an idea that I've kind of done for a long time with my own children and with uh, school groups that I've been a part of because what you do is you you wonder and then you you wander <laughs> and then you wander some more and wander some more and wander and wander and it's really really great so uh, the way that it works <clears throat> there's pretty much no rules uh, the main thing that you need to do is kind of train your brain to wonder about things so when you wonder about things it really almost like opens up a little space in your mind and then when you find the answer to your wonder, whether it's right away because you whip out your phone and you've got to Google it and you've got to figure it out, or if it's something that you can't really search for or something you need to wait and think about and um, kind of come up with the answer later, once you get that answer because you thought about it first and wondered, it almost like there's like a built-in pocket in your brain for that information. And it'll stay in there a whole lot longer. The things that you can wonder about and then learn, you will retain that information for longer than if somebody just told you a fact. So that's really great for us because human beings, we are so curious and it's really, really easy for us to wonder about things. And I've been trying to think of like, okay, how am I gonna rein it in to do this video? Because I wonder all kinds of stuff all the time. Um, it's part of being a good scientist and it's part of being a good parent. You're just always kind of wondering what are some things that we can, um, that we can convey and learn about and, and build up our own knowledge and then pass that on. So what we're going to do is we're going to wonder, and I'm on my front porch right now because it's been raining <laughs> for a little bit. Uh, hopefully it stays dry so I don't get totally soaked, but you know, it's the Pacific Northwest. We're kind of all weather people here. So if we get a little wet, I think it will be okay. So the first wonder that I have, I step out my front door and I look out. Um, the first thing I wonder is, I wonder if it's raining. So that in itself can lend you to uh, further questions of, well, what is weather and how do scientists predict the weather and what's a meteorologist and how's the weather gonna change? Those are all some wonderings that you can have. <clears throat> and when I like to do my wonder walks, um, I like to speak out loud. Uh, because sometimes when you say something that you're wondering about, it's going to trigger a wonder in whoever you're with, or just hearing your own self, hearing those own words come out, uh, creates that connection in your brain a little bit too. So we like to say, okay, where, well, here's what I wonder. So I wonder if it's going to rain on us. That's the first wonder. The second thing I wonder is, I wonder what that smell is. I like to use all my senses when we're doing a wonder wander and I smell the azalea bushes that are just behind me over here. You can't quite see them. We'll go look at them in a second. But they smell like a tropical island. They smell so good. So I wonder, mm, what's that smell? And then I wonder, okay, what other things 
might I be smelling? I wonder if there's any other good smells or bad smells or weird smells in my yard. Probably all of the above. So when we would like to wander and wonder, it's just asking questions. It's just freeing up your brain to think things and not have an immediate answer right away. It's okay if you don't know something. So uh, I have with me on my front porch a bunch of stuff and I thought it would be kind of fun. I just got, I, I literally walked like, I don't know, 50 yards uh, around my property and I just snipped off a couple of different plants because it's raining. A lot of the animals that we would expect to see might be sheltering right now. So that's gonna make it a little more difficult to wonder about them, but it doesn't mean that we can't wonder about some of our plants. So we're gonna start with my favorite plant of all time. My favorite group of plants, I should say. This is moss. And if you're from the Pacific Northwest, you probably know quite a bit about this plant. Either you're a lawn owner and you're trying to get rid of this, or you like to hike and you see it growing on the trees and the ground all around us. This is um, one of the shortest little plants that there is. And moss is pretty primitive. It's been around for many, many millions of years. And the leaves are quite small. So here's one little moss plant. I don't know if you can see that very well. Tiny little thing. But what's amazing about moss is it doesn't really have an ability to transport water, which is why moss is always really short. Um, so we have a variety of dis different mosses. In fact, I ripped out my flower beds at my house and I put in a moss garden because I love moss so much. And this is just one, one variety. There's a whole bunch of different species um, and so that can be your wonder you can wonder what exact species that you're coming across and i recommend finding a field guide um, you can check one out from a library or there's plenty of really good ones online um, i also like there's a couple of apps that are great for snapping a picture of something that you're looking at um, and then they can tell you what species and then that can lead you on more wondering about i wonder how widespread this moss is i wonder how long it lives does it flower does it creep and grow? Is it, is it a problem? Is it toxic? Is it harmful? What eats it? Lots and lots of questions that you can ask about moss. So let's, let's talk about another plant similar to moss. It's a little bit bigger. It's also very primitive. This is a fern. So ferns are great to wonder about. There's all kinds of things that you can observe um, and look and you can even, ferns kind of have this distinct smell about them. This is called a fiddlehead because it's all kind of rolled up here. The fronds are all tucked in a tight coil there. This is really fun and common to see, especially this time of year in the springtime when we're getting lots of rain and lots more sunlight, the ferns kind of grow up. Um, and fiddleheads of some species of ferns are edible. So it's kind of a nice spring treat. So lots of other things I can wonder about this. I wonder why it's got this kind of brown fuzzy stuff on it. I wonder how long it takes to get from this fiddlehead to this. That's kind of a fun uh, observation that you can do in your yard, in your neighborhood, is look at things over time. How do they change? How do they grow? So there's a couple of ferns and I have, gosh, maybe 30 or 40 ferns on my property here. Um, and all of them are a little bit different. So you can compare and contrast. That's another good wonder um, as well. All right. So let's, let's talk about leaves a little bit. Um, plants have these great ability to do photosynthesis, which means they take sunlight and in the presence of water and carbon dioxide, they go through a chemical process and they create sugar that they then use to grow. And leaves being green is how they accomplish that. And leaves can be totally different shaped. I brought, I kind of got um, a, a, a smattering of different <laughs> leaf options to show you just how different they can be. So the first is this one here. This is uh, cedar, western red cedar. And this is one that really smells really very fragrant. And the leaves are so small and they overlap and kind of tuck into one another. This is in the gymnosperm group of plants, which includes the conifer trees, the evergreens that we're so famous for here in the Pacific Northwest. So nice cedar tree. I got a blue spruce here, which is similar. It also has those waxy little needles, only these ones don't overlap. They, they kind of grow, and here's the underside. You can see it's a little bit different color on one side than the next. 
different amounts of photosynthesis that are happening there. So you can definitely be wondering about the chemical processes. Maybe you're gonna wonder about the taxonomy, about the naming or the classification of these plants. Maybe you're gonna wonder what uses they have for humans. Things like uh, cedar have been used by native people here in the Pacific Northwest for thousands of years. It's a really useful plant for us. Um, then we've got some other types of leaves. Ooh, this is probably my, my most dangerous leaf here. <laughs> this is a holly tree. Um, and the leaves come to these very sharp prickly points. Go ahead and throw a like in the comments if you've ever touched a holly bush before. The holly is really shiny and kind of waxy coated on one side. It does have berries and it does have these lighter colored undersides which can be really really pretty. Um, and this is a plant that uh, a lot of people don't like because ooh, ouch it hurts but it also um, kind of takes over. It loves to uh, grow in our moist soils here in the Pacific Northwest and so it really takes off here um, and we see a lot of this. I know I personally have cut down many holly trees and they spring right back up from the stump. So it's one that if you don't want in your yard, you're gonna have to work hard uh, to get rid of it. And then we've got, um, I have some, some really big leaves behind me. These are fiddle leaves. Um, this is a fig tree. This is a tropical tree, but for the summertime around here, I like to move them out to my front porch um, where they get lots and lots of light and do lots of growth. But look how big these leaves are. Really, really cool. Bush there. Ooh, here's another one that's a little bit dangerous. This is an invasive species here. Does anybody think they want to guess what this species is? I'll give you a clue by showing you the stem with those spines on it. This is the Himalayan blackberry. And what's kind of interesting about the leaves is the backside is covered with these tiny little hairs as well as some spines there. So this is one that is an invasive species. So it's one that we don't like to see here in uh, the Pacific Northwest because it does take over and it does displace some of our other native species. We have native blackberries that are here, um, but they are not quite as tall as this. The thorns are smaller and the stems don't form arching canes and they just kind of grow along the ground. They also mature in about um, June or so for the berries, whereas this guy peaks in about August, uh, late July. Um, this is a great one if you do like pie though, <laughs> or blackberry jam. This is a very edible fruit, which is why it's been uh, sort of shared all around the world, um, but it takes over. It's originally from the Himalayas, which is kind of cool to think about. Um, other weird kind of cool leaves that I have. This one's a huckleberry leaf, lots of tiny little leaves. There's a lot of science in the naming of the leaves. So different leaves have different shapes. And this is a fun thing to wonder about. Maybe you wanna wonder um, what's the biggest leaf in the world or the smallest leaf. Maybe you wanna wonder about, um, you know, are the leaves, do they have these branches or these veins? Are the leaves opposite one another or are they staggered a little bit? Different plants have different growing strategies and it's really kind of fun to look at. And now that it's springtime, we're almost to May, we start to see lots of flowers coming out on our, um, our trees. Most of the growing season around here is in the spring and in the summer. And so we can start to see flowers on a lot of our plants. Sometimes they're not very obvious though, so you gotta be a really good observer, get your looking goggles on, and as you wander and wander around your property or around your neighborhood, you can look for signs of the next generation of plants. So I don't know if you can see them on here. These are little huckleberry blossoms here and they are kind of upside down really cute and they're gonna form berries this is really similar to blueberries um, they're in the same family kind of cool to see those little sneaky things and if you just walked by this bush if it's growing like this you would never even see those little flowers but you know who does see them bumblebees so I I'm cautious to say I think the Sun is coming out and I think we'll be able to take a walk around and see if we can find some signs of animal life now that it's not pouring down rain so who's with me you guys want to come and look at see some cool um, cool creatures all right we're gonna pop this out of my holder here 
And we're gonna flip it around so you don't have to stare at my face. All right, let's go for an adventure. So I start walking. Um, ooh, I wonder. I wonder when someone will invent will invent smell a vision because these azaleas, ooh, they smell so good. Really, really nice fragrance there. More moss, so you can see these tiny little plants. Really, really little. Ooh, and I think I see my first creature. I wonder if I can grab him carefully, if he'll feel calm enough to come out in my palm. This is um, an animal that has tons of names and depending on what you call this animal, um, linguistic scientists can usually tell where you're from. So go ahead and pop in the comments what you call this little bug. Some people call them roly polies, or potato bugs, or sow bugs. Kind of cool to see how they can really curl up and be protected within that little shell. So something that you might wonder is, wow, I wonder how, bi ooh, how big this animal is going to get. I wonder, oh, look at that. As soon as he's off my hand, he popped right open or she popped right open, started investigating. So this is an animal. Um, I know it growing up as a pill bug or a potato bug. Um, but when I became a scientist, I figured out that these are called isopods. And this is one of the only crustaceans that lives on land. Um, most of the other crustaceans are things that we know like crabs or shrimp and they're aquatic species. Now we're going to come on over here to my wood pile and I stuck a couple of logs out here um, not undercover to try to attract some animals. And when you attract animals to um, your, your yard, you want to take into consideration the things that animals need to survive. So what makes good habitat is some shelter. So a way to be out of the weather a little bit. Uh, it, it's important to have a food source. And so when you can create those things, you can start to see wildlife living in your area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this log over. This is a piece of maple log. Um, and I've been letting it decay a little bit to try to see if we can get some more creatures. Here's some more of those isopods more crustaceans. I also see, oh, there's some signs, some evidence of animals, some spider webs here. I don't know if the camera's gonna be close enough to see, but there are actually some little tiny, tiny little spiders active right there in that web. Let's see what else we can notice. Oh, check it out. This is, so normally I'm talking about marine creatures, but here we've got a tiny snail. And this snail, um, I'm not familiar with the type of species that we have here. So this is really cool to see. Normally I'm talking about big moon snails and we have some really nice low tides coming up soon. So you have to stay, stay tuned to see if you can see, um, those really, really big snails. I see some more bugs, lots of things kind of crawling and moving around. That's kind of neat. All right, let's move. I'm going to move this other log and see this one's a little bit wetter. A little more, few more bugs. Let's roll the big one out of the way and see what we can see. Oh, check it out. Here's some more creatures. All right. So right here is a big slug. Slugs are gastropods too. They are in the mollusk family with our sea slugs and snails. Oh, here's another species of snail. You guys see that tiny little shell there? I wonder so much about these creatures because I just don't know much about them. More of those roly polies, isopods, lots of bugs, a couple spiders creeping around in here too. Another tiny snail shell. Very cool to see. So then when you find an animal, you can start to wonder, maybe I wonder what it's closely related to. I wonder maybe what it eats or how it moves. Oh, look at that. There's a cool spider right there. I wonder if the spiders eat these crustaceans here, eat these isopods. I wonder how big these isopods can get. These are some pretty big ones. Let's see if I can pull one over so we can see them. 
I wonder how many legs they have. It's a good thing to wonder about, huh? Let's see if I can... <laughs> I wonder if they mind being touched like this. They're really good at grabbing on. This is a, such a cool spot and I really, I've taken maybe 20 steps out my front door here. Um, so you can do this too. It, you don't have to know the answers to the things that you're wondering about. Um, I've seen a lot of plant stuff here too. Like I wonder, ooh, I wonder what, what plant that came from. I wonder how long these leaves will take to break down. Yeah, this is really cool. Um, oh, look, we got some some cool life over here. I wonder, gosh, I wonder what this type of leaf is called. And I wonder why there are tiny hairs all over this plant and why the stem is red. Lots and lots of things that we can wonder about, huh? So I encourage you, when you're out and about, when it's hopefully not raining, but you can do this in the rain too. There's lots of things uh, to wonder about in the rain. As you're walking around, as you're seeing things, just ask those questions out loud. If you're walking out with kids, have the kids ask their questions and just let them know that you're not going to answer them right away because you may not know the answer or, you know, it's sometimes good to wonder about them for a little bit. But hopefully you'll have an adventure of your own. You can find some, some uh, creatures, you can find some habitat, wonder about whatever you want, and then find the answers to those wonders. So this is really great. I hope that I have sparked some just questions of your own. If you want to ask questions in the comments, we will do our best to answer them. But just know we might not know everything and I might, I might have to do a little Googling myself before we can answer you. Um, thanks to Carly for um, handling our back end tech stuff of answering those questions and typing things out while we're there. I see lots of great comments and um, good reactions. Thank you all for tuning in and we hope that you'll be able to join us for more live videos. We're doing these a couple times a week. So make sure you like Harbor Wild Watch, feel free to share as well. And then of course, if you would love to donate, um, we have ways for you to do that to support all this uh, great learning and having fun that, that we're a part of. So head on over to harborwildwatch.org if you'd like to make a donation. Otherwise, we'll just see you soon. Thanks for tuning in.